Hey, everybody, this is Jordan Rudis, and I am here with Manny from AI Alchemist. And Manny and I connected because he actually was the one who had all the ideas for my Shadow of the Moon video and won a very big contest that Lightrix uh, had sure. put out to put uh, to basically find somebody who could kind of come up with a storyline and some ideas for the visuals and a concept. And a lot of people entered, and I actually got to see a lot of the entries and and Manny's uh, you know entry with all his pictures and images and ideas was definitely a standout and so uh many of you out there have seen the video and uh you know it turned out so well and uh i'm it super amazing. excited about so it. it's a big part of this uh big big part of the album release and it was a whole adventure part of it uh did not include me because i was in the studio working on uh my album and um and manny's here to tell us a little bit about it because uh you know so many cool visuals in there and i know you had a big experience with the light tricks team so yeah, um yeah share a little bit of the inside scoop all right yeah you got it well um like you said um uh after after i sent in the uh the proposal for the uh for the music video um it was a it was an interesting process from there and it it, it was it was great in a sense because um i uh I lived a couple of years in LA and I worked in film as a costume and set designer primarily for, from like 2009 to 2011. But I, uh, I got to experience how a lot of creative compromises tend to happen in, in uh, putting together a, a large scale um, project, like a music video or a film or a TV series. So um, the, the original idea and I've always, I've, long been curious uh, whether or not it was your original idea was uh, this journey of a lone astronaut going to find the uh, the elixir of life and this, this was like uh, the early pitch idea that uh, that um, was part of the contest rules was that you had to kind of mold a story around this this idea of a lone astronaut going into going into the uh, a foreign planet and uh, alien alien world and finding the elixir of life basically uh, so the original idea, I, I molded around that uh, with a bunch of visu visuals that I did with uh, Dolly 3. And then I even put together a uh, a video that was about a minute long that kind of roughly hit all the significant beats of the, the story uh, through Pika art. And, um, and, and that ended up winning, which is fantastic. Uh, and that got us to the next level where I started talking to the Lightrix team and the director guy. And uh, the funniest thing, because when I when I was looking through the uh, or original idea and uh, through my proposal, the thing that I told to myself is like, for the budget they're looking at, this is pretty ambitious. And that's the same thing the guy told me is like, that's very ambitious. <laughs> so um, uh, me, me and Guy talked two or three times over some pretty good conversations. And we actually together. And that's what I love about about filmmaking is the creative comp collaboration like the story morphed into uh more of a metaphorical story of uh the two astronauts you know lovers uh going through the journey of life and it's very much a uh journey into unknown worlds is is a metaphor for the journey of life and that's that's where we ended up with the story so it uh it, it morphed into something that originally wasn't but i think because of creative co collaboration and, and because of uh being able to work with so many great creatives on a collaborative effort like this like uh it became something much better than i think it would have been originally and i, I love how everything turned out it's just amazing it's such a great experience and like i That's... said i uh i loved being back on the the film set like it was it was really energizing for me it was it was so awesome let's go you know one of the things i really liked about it was the kind of combination of the LTX studio, which is the platform that they really wanted to showcase, yes. uh, which is, you know, an AI kind of based platform and also the real world footage and funny, you'll, you know, smile at this or think it's interesting, but a lot of people who saw it, they, because of what's going on in today's world with AI, they were like, Oh, the whole thing is AI. Okay. Well, <laughs> Well, of course, we know it wasn't. And the thing that Indeed. I kind of appreciated about it mostly is that it was nice that it was a combination of like real people and real acting and a real place, but also AI. And again, Absolutely. a lot of people didn't even, 
even thought that everything was created by AI, which is almost a little sad to me in the sense that, hey, we got real actors here and everything. So, you know, I'm like, you know, trying to trying to raise the awareness of, of how this was actually created. But that balance, I think, is really, really interesting. And you probably understand that balance and, and what they went for the how the AI was used in a way that most people wouldn't. So maybe you can tell yes, me and tell all of the people watching how they balance that and where they use the AI and in what way, yeah. and, you know, just how that worked. Well, I think uh, to go with that, it would uh, be useful to start at kind of the whole process of filming. So uh, the filming was entirely done in Belgrade, Serbia over three days, but those three days, each day was for a single project out of the three winners. There was a commercial, there was uh, a um, short film, and then there was your music video. And uh, so the first and second day were the short fil film and the commercial. And then only one day uh, was reserved for shooting the music video. And uh, out of all the people that I talked to, you know, we're talking about industry professionals uh, all coming together on this project. Like this was a serious effort by a serious, serious creators. Um, nobody, nobody could remember a time that it, they ever did. I think we did four, four location moves in one day, one single day, four location moves. And we're talking like an hour or so apart for, for some of them. It was, it was an amazing endeavor. It, uh, it started at a, uh, a mansion that was like the former governor's, you know, probably 50, 60 years ago of Belgrade. Um, it's now, it's now reserved as a, uh, a venue for, for um, film, film shoots. Uh, so it started there early in the day. Then it went to the uh, kind of the, there's a, a hilltop that had that very alien looking structure. It looks kind of like a Mayan temple. And that's um, Belgrade's uh, kind of version of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. That's where we did the, the second location. Oh, wow. That was about an hour away from the uh, the mansion. And then uh, there was a, a tower that looked kind of like the Space Needle, but but bigger, that we went and did it as the third location. That was just around down the street from uh, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier location. And then from there, um, we went to a volume stage and one of those big 180 volume stages that they use in... Uh, um, Marvel movies and uh, and a lot of the really high, heavily CGI movies uh, these days uh, that was incredible. I'd never been on a volume stage before, so that was that was wild to get to see that in action in, um, in real time. But um, the given that all these things were done at such breakneck breakneck speed, the planning of this whole project was three weeks long as well. Like from 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 the uh, winners being chosen to us being in Serbia, it was like a three week turnaround. It was insane. So, so what um, I think the the biggest significant um, aspect that the AI helped us leverage was filling in the gaps of the the music video where maybe we didn't have the entire story fully fleshed out, fully storyboarded. We got in there, we got as many shots as we can it could in like fourteen hours, and then the uh, LTX Studio uh, generations were able to fill in the gaps where where there needed to be, you know, other, other parts of the story to be told. Uh, so yeah. I think, I think, uh, especially when you're working with a gorilla crew that, uh, that you have a very small window, you're, you're working on a low budget. This really fills in a lot of the, the holes that you might have in your creative process and, and empowers creators to do far more with far less. Yeah, that's so interesting to hear that. And I have a couple of thoughts, one of which, you know, from my perspective in my world of the music business, I guess just all around the budget they had, which was, I think, 150 K was a was more than most anybody I know has to spend on a video. Yeah, yeah, literally. So that's so from one perspective, it's not a lot but to make a film. But from another perspective, it's a lot. And Certainly. so, you know, what? What is interesting to me is that in this case, there was one perspective going into it where the AI could be used or the LTX studio in this case, let's shout it out for what it is, would yeah. be used to kind of like fill in the gaps where there maybe yes. wasn't enough time to do what you wanted to do. And you're using the AI and the technology to kind of like just fill that in. But the 
thing that I love about technology, and I think and I think it was used in this way as well, is that you can you can do different things. You can be creative in other ways. It opens up other doors. It's not just okay. Well, you know, we don't have enough time or budget to do the shot, so we'll just use this, and it'll kind of be okay. Maybe okay. I get that. But the thing that's exciting to me is wow. We can use this technology and we can enable people to see things that they imagined that Absolutely. may not have been possible before. Absolutely. And that to me is like the real magic. And I'm really interested in that personally. And I know, you know, you, you're into this deeper than I am because I'm trying to put out a dream theater album and a solo album and all this music Absolutely. stuff. But whenever <laughs> I have a chance, I'm on my phone or on my computer and I'm playing with this and I get like, I'm thrilled with the fact that I can, come up with an idea and go into like a runway or an ltx or a you know what is it a luma what's it called luma dream, dream. and yeah. i can just yeah dream machine i can just type it in and next thing you know i'm seeing stuff that's like oh my god i just made what's in my head into something that you can see like it's crazy true, to me. Yeah. it's really really it's exciting a, so that that element of it is incredible and i don't know like how I mean, it's moving so fast. Every day I'll pick up, you know, one of these applications and I'm like, oh, they have the next level of the model. And now you can do this and you can do that. It's really, really cool. And it's hard. You know, I know a lot of people out there are kind of like, you know, the AI thing is like, well, you know, don't tell me about that. I don't want to know about it. And, and, you know, I get that it's threatening for people. I totally do. As any new technology tends to be. Yeah, but I absolutely. think, I think it's really important for, it's really important for people to, to try to understand it and for and for creative people i think it's thrilling and something that should be kind of like you know embraced and understood because it's just what's happening in our times these amazing you know these amazing creative mind opening opportunities so i can't personally i can't ignore yes. it and like you i want i want to be one of the people who takes it in the field of music mostly but also in the visual way and steers it into a place of positivity like yeah, absolutely, you know, how can absolutely. we use this for, for, for yeah. posi positivity so yeah. absolutely yeah any any tool ultimately is uh only as good as the the people who wield it so so if we get people that wish good things from it then good things will spring forth with it and there's going to be equally people that take advantage of it in bad ways so i i like to be an advocate for it in positive create uh with a positive creative vision and putting out my intention to the world, uh, like you were saying, um, well, creative creativity, you know, at, to its um, first principles is like you said, um, trying to bring your inner world to the outer world. And with AI that is becoming more and more democratized for more and more people, how many great people with great ideas are out there, but they don't have the ability to bring that inner world to the outer world because they don't have, the millions of dollars that it that it used to take to bring that vision into fruit into the into the world. Now you can do that for a couple of subscription fees and and a reasonable uh, grasp on uh, big big picture ideas and uh, and uh, uh, in filmmaking, for instance, you know the editing process and the directing process, all of those processes. Uh, you know, AI is not at the point yet that it can completely take over the creative process of making a film, for instance. That's still very much the the creative vision of the uh, of the individual creator. So people that are in this field, like this, allows you and empowers you to do so much more with your skill set. If you're a cameraman, uh, now you can be a cameraman that does your your own features uh, with AI. Um, you you can bring your skill set into it. And yeah. even if you want to stay pure to your craft, AI will allow you to do your own marketing. Let's say that you're somebody that doesn't have a agency like CAA to, to do all your marketing for you. It's going to empower you. Even if you want to be pure with your art, it's going to empower you to be able to do all your marketing for pennies on the dollar and not have to worry about spending a lot on all these other extrinsic marketing factors. And you can, you know, invest in your craft a lot more. Yeah. What's interesting to me about it. And I realized this, the more I play with various kinds of AI is that, you know, some people think that, it kind of takes away the need to have skill, right? But I kind of like 
in many ways I disagree <laughs> with it. In most ways I disagree with that because absolutely like I'll create some cool vi- I'll create some cool visuals and I'm like, this is cool. But you know, and I get it to a point. But then there's people who are dedicating themselves to it really seriously, like you, and yeah. who take that and spend the time and the research and really d- dive in wholeheartedly with every ounce of who you are to yeah. craft this. So the ordinary you know, guy on the street can have a lot of fun and expand their minds and be creative and, you know, get a kick out of all the stuff. But to really create something that has true meaning, you still have to develop a real skill and you have to know the yeah. tools and know how to use the application. It's a different kind of a thing, which leads me to like the music side of stuff, which like, let's talk for a minute about that. Like there's some very threatening music uh applications out there that are can can you know be extremely fun as well and i have a perspective about that and i want to share that with you and everybody else you know things like suno or udio these companies that are offering some really really kind of in many ways very cool services which for those who don't know you know you can basically go into the suno application and you can type in a prompt you can say i want to write a song for my wife's birthday i want it to be how she speaks different languages and how she has a lot of friends and how she's funny and uh, make it really humorous and short and in the in you know in a folk rock style and hit go next thing you know there's your song two minutes later. Well, amazing. I send it to, you know, my wife and she smiles and she goes, oh, that's amazing. Like, how did you do that? Or they don't even think about that. They just get a song in the mail. And all of a sudden you have this person who gets the joy of creating, creating music, you know, simply, but creating something. And the per- person on the receiving end who gets this thing with all the lyrics and everything that could be actually pretty darn good yeah so absolutely that's an int- that's an interesting thing of course you know a lot of people out there who are you know my fa- fans followers just watching say oh but what about the rights of the composers and blah 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 blah. all that is extremely valid and that all needs to be worked out properly and with great respect and there's a lot of discussion about how how AI actually takes in that information and how it's maybe different than just like somebody who would just rip off, you know, a yeah. series of chords or something like that. Certainly. There's a lot to be said about that. And anybody who's interested can do that research and really find out how the computer really learns kind of like a human being and puts it together. So this that's a whole legal thing. And it's, it's a concern. And I respect yeah. that. And it needs to be worked out. On a creative level, though, and the future, I think that something like that, where you can type in a prompt and just make a song. I mean, that to me is is cool, but it's very, very surfacey. It doesn't yes, give yeah. us as creators, it doesn't give us as creators the ability to go in and really shape our vision, to work with it, to go in to change it. And I know that, you know, some of these companies are really working on that. And it's it's yeah. great because that's where I think it should go. And personally, that's my that's my mission is to work with these companies and say, hey guys, this is really cool. But how about if you kind of like position it this way and go here with it to allow creative people to have more control, to get more satisfaction out of it, to, to up the level of it and to steer it in a really positive direction. Because you can't get rid of it. You can't erase it. Yeah, yeah. but what can <laughs> we do to make it yeah. You know, what can we do to make it even cooler, even better, and offer a, an experience that's more enriching and more positive? Absolutely. Well, um, the first thing that I would say to anybody that, uh, you know, ha- has an aversion to this and and would like to see it scaled back is um, these, these technologies are not just in the creative space. This is a matter of, uh, to governments, it's a, it's a matter of national security. So despite anybody's aversion to it getting into creative spaces and other things, it's, it's not slowing down because there are powerful people in a, in a 21st century space race against other, other powerful people that aren't, aren't going to allow this to slow down. And you're seeing in Europe, for instance, like uh, aside from a, a couple of key players, like a uh, minstrel um, uh, Europe is largely out of the AI game because they've, they've been more, uh, they've had more of a hammer on the the copyright and the trademark side of the the legal battle than the U.S. has and other countries have. Mm-hmm. So they've kind of knocked themselves out of the race uh, in that regard. Uh, so 
it, with, you know, it's, a, it's an unfortunate consequence of, of the um, larger players uh, in the space. Like they, if they're going to, if they're going to have to choose between siding with national security interests and the individual creator, unfortunately, they're not going to be siding with the individual creators in, in this country, as far as I'm concerned. So people that are creative and have an aversion to it, it's, it's time for you to at least maybe you think it's your enemy, know your enemy, just like any uh, tactician should do worth their salt. You need to know your enemy. You need to know how to use it. You know, you need to know how to utilize it. And maybe you don't use it in your creative process, use it in marketing. If you're a small business owner, you can, you know, a lot of small, small business owners still rely heavily on radio ads. You know, now you can make your own jingles and they're probably going to be way better than the ones that, that you get from some other uh, small scale advertising agency. Like there's so many different use cases that don't have to infringe on, you know, the, the professional recording industry. Like there's, like you said, you know, right. doing birthday jingles that you send to a friend on their birthday and it really lights them up because it's so personalized, but it was also so right. relatively eff effortless for the person to put it together. Like those small gestures, like really brighten people's day. And, and now you're empower empowered to do that and do creative things that you were never able to before. Uh, so, so I think it's just like, you know, back in the industrial revolution, there was the, the Luddite revolution where uh, people were against the, the factory technologies. And I think that the lesson that we need to learn from that time was that the only thing that uh, rejecting that technology did was put uh, working people behind and it just made it so those tools were more and more in the control of the the, the people that owned the capital. And this this is no different if 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 creators that you know aren't influential and don't have a lot of money are rejecting these tools that just makes it so the people that have moneyed interests are going to be more and more in control of the social contract going forward and we are at a t time where the social contract is going to get rewritten so those of us that are not in influence need to be knowledgeable about what's coming and be advocates for those of us around us our neighbors our friends fellow artists and that's I, I think that's where we're most valuable ultimately is uh, to be advocates for those of us around us, because there's some people who would like to take advantage of it and and like to keep the majority of what it does for themselves. And I don't think that's the way it should be. So, yeah. Yeah. No, it's amazing that all the perspectives of it and all the information that people don't know about what's going on. And, you know, yes. just to <laughs> as a as a kind of a simple thing to point out, you know, a lot of um What's happening in the music space is turning to AI, but musicians who possibly are against the whole concept are using it without knowing that's what it is. Yeah, uh, I like oh, yeah, to absolutely. point out my uh, I like to point out my good friends at Moises, the company that everybody knows Moises these days. It's an application absolutely. for those who don't you know, that does amazing track separation, so you can basically upload a stereo audio audio file or even something off your camera roll or anything like that, and then it'll take that and even if it's just a stereo audio file with all the instruments as part of it, it'll take it and it'll separate it out. You'll get separate vocals, drums, bass, piano. You can kind of divide it up the way you want. And every month they're like introducing new instruments that the AI can kind of like take out of it and really be really extremely clear. And then plus giving you all the chords and letting you slow down and speed up. It's an amazing application. It's all based. Uh, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news for those of you who don't want to hear this, but it's all based on AI. And of course, you know, I'm reading every day, as you are, those of us who pay attention, about the amazing things that's happening in the medical world with AI. Incredible, incredible stuff that's just so, like, that's the way it should be used to cure disease and to just, you know, allow people to live healthier lives and to know about what's going on with their bodies. And, and these are powerful powerful technologies so one thing i want to do before we we head out is i want to well you know i know that you have some plans to do some interesting things with our our uh broadcast here and maybe we can show them how like we can take the image just our image on the screen and use one of the tools and go all right and yeah we can definitely do it <laughs> voila right <laughs> i don't know where yeah, we are right yeah. now because it's real time but we'll find it we're going to find out where we just went fun. to. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But, uh, yeah, and that's just the right. idea that I said before is we can, you know, we can go anywhere. Things that you wouldn't even expect to see. Like Here that. We are. <laughs> Here we are. I, uh, 
<laughs> the air is clean up here. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I can, I can see clearly now. I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. <laughs> yeah. So many, so many amazing things. And like, you know, maybe, you know, let's, let's allow you who've been, who you've been experimenting with all these tools just to say a couple of your favorites, the ones that oh, you, yeah, know, if you're out there, you want to check out some of the cool things that you can do, like check out. Oh you know, man, there's, whatever. there's, there's too many to, to even highlight, but top, uh, the, top, the, 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 ones top I, the ones that I, yeah. So, so my, uh, my short films uh, are on YouTube under bite sized stories. Uh, we'll leave a link to multiple things in the description, but uh, for, filmmaking is my first my first love uh, editing especially like i love editing and i just lose myself and i'm sure that's the same way you feel when you're you're playing music i just lose myself and hours go by without without effort without even realizing it i, I just got lost in the creative process putting those puzzle pieces together um it's it's so so enjoyable to me that that process so um in making my films uh the the main tools that i'd shout out is uh, Claude Sonnet 3.5. Uh, in my experience, that's the best chatbot, better than GPT-4 for creative writing. Um, I think GPT-4 is a bit better for technical writing, but Claude Sonnet is better for creative writing, in my personal opinion. Um, Kling, uh, the Chinese video generator, it does almost as good of video generations as Runway 3 does, but at a significantly lower uh, cost for, for inference for each generation. It's like one third the cost, I think, of a runway generation, and it's almost almost as good. Runway's got a little edge, but the the cost is hard to justify for me on my budget. Uh, but Kling is amazing. I probably use Kling like eighty percent of the scenes that I make for my films is Kling. Uh, Udio has been fantastic for making for making uh, film scores. That's what I use for the mm -hmm. the orchestral scores in my in my films, and I'm you know it can do just about any genre. I'm gonna plan on doing some stuff with like synth synth style music uh in the future uh, i'm gonna do like a um metropolis uh, a remake of the silent film metropolis but do it in a steampunk style so it'll have like not the dream style music not, in not, not the dream theater metropolis hey I, I might have to integrate some of that i might have to integrate some of that that's a good idea there you go. i didn't there even think go. about that right. yeah but All those right. are those are probably my top three right there cling uh claude sonnet oh and leonardo ai leonardo is fantastic for um uh for um character consistency scene consistency and uh and and also the the creative style like it has so many ways to plug in um uh your inspiration uh, images to allow for a lot more consistency throughout your story and then of course you know uh once i'm once i'm hopefully at the point where i'm doing more longer um longer format pieces uh, i'd love to break into some feature films and i'd love to blend traditional um, filmmaking with AI. I don't want to stay com uh, completely an AI filmmaker, but that's what my budget allows right now. But, you know, in the future, sure. maybe that will change. And you can bet for damn sure I'll be using LTX for my storyboarding because that is a phenomenal tool for storyboarding. It just makes the process yeah. so much easier. Yeah, and that's so good. I'm so happy you shared all those particular things that people can go to and check out, including me. Um, but I've, I will say that I've really been enjoying some of the new um features of ltx because yes, you know amen. it's still in beta and if they're doing it like that and releasing all those things then this thing is you know give it another year or whatever and probably do everything so it's just it's it's definitely exciting to be part of it um so i guess we should close up and say if you haven't seen the shadow of the moon video Okay. You know, that's what brought us together and Elytrix, you know, in their their competition. And uh, yeah, it's awesome to get a chance to talk and uh, too, to go on this, ama this amazing journey with all oh, these man, creative it's been, tools. It's been uh, a uh, life defining experience for me. I tell you what, it was it was amazing. I loved every moment of it, and I'm still loving every moment of it. It's just like, you know, it, it's it's appropriate because the the song is about space travel and i feel like i'm rocketing to the moon right now too like it's just been ever since then like my creative process has gotten better like the tools just keep getting better and better and just like oh it's been such an exciting time and uh, i i just encourage everybody out there to go and play out play around with this stuff and get familiar with it you're going to need it the 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 new economy is going to require you to to be able to leverage these tools and so the more familiar you are with them the better uh we will of course leave a, a bunch of 
uh, information in the description for uh, for links to the the music video to Light Tricks tools. I'll even leave some for the the tools that I mentioned. But man, I really appreciate this. Yeah. Uh, it's it's great to have uh, built a friendship over the last few months. Man, you're you're an inspiration to me, and like being able to um, be friends with a, a master of your craft that you are. Like it just makes me want to be the master of mine as well. And I really appreciate you, my friend. Oh, thanks. That's so awesome. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you and so glad we connected and I look forward to exploring the future with you and journeying to other lands again Amen. together. <laughs> Amen. All right. Well, you take care, my All friend. Right. I appreciate you. Everybody take care. Thank you. Thanks for joining Th us. Thanks so much. Bye.